Clint beat the bank is there. Lightning Spear coming through between those. Expedite is just in front. Lightning Spear throwing out the challenge in the closing stages. Lightning Spear and Asheen Murphy get through and have won. Expedite in second. Third is very tight. Lord Glitter's on the outside. So, David, you were at in the, the 1980s. What were your first impressions when you started? Um, it was daunting. Um, you know, going to a boarding school at the age of 10. Uh, an Englishman going to a Welsh school. I remember arriving there and for me the fact that there was 22 other boys that were just leaving home and going to boarding school for the first time, um, it made it okay. Uh, I found it very warming when I arrived there and um, we were the hands of very good people. So you're in Fandingat. What was the culture shock as an Englishman going to a Welsh boarding school? Was that quite strange? Um, it definitely was. It was very Welsh, funnily yeah. enough. Um, you know, proud nation. Um, it's ironic. I was an Englishman in a Welsh school. Now I'm very much a Welshman in an English environment. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, you learn to you learn to embrace it. Um, you know, I didn't know Wales particularly well, even though my mother was Welsh, um, and I actually enjoyed it. Um, there was great camaraderie, um, and I think that's a great trait of the Welsh. Who do you support these days in Wales England rugby matches? Oh, very much Wales. Um, you know, that's um, good. <laughs> it, yeah, um, and they've been very successful. Um, but um, no, I'm I'm very much amongst Englishmen and Irishmen, um, and I'm the minority being Welsh. But um, I enjoy that, and I enjoy supporting Wales. And when you went up to the main school, you're in which house? I was in Clearstead, which was Blacks, which yeah. at the time was thought of as the rebellious house, um, and it was a lot of fun. John Kendrick was my housemaster, and uh, no, I had I had five really good years in Blacks. And did you fulfil the rebellious um, brief, as it were, yourself? At times, I think everybody in Tierth did, did at some point. Um, yeah, I definitely had my rebellious side. Um, be it putting bets on, going to the bookmakers, having a drink on a Saturday night occasionally, um, whether it was being up most of the night talking and talking to other guys in other houses. Um, there was always a rebellious side, especially in Tierford. So you were interested in horse racing when you were at Clondubbery. Did anything at Clondubbery help you in your career? Definitely, I think learning to interact with people um, and learning to communicate with people, um, be it with teachers, with, with your friends, be it with outside, people from outside the college. Um, from what I'm doing now, communication and interaction is part and parcel mm. of my job. It's from CCF um, to going to chapel every day. They were all parts of routine and what we do here at the stables is routine. You're organising, you're telling people what to do, you're, they're all doing different things and, and that used to happen at Clandery all the time. Any masters in particular who made an impression on you? I think there were several, um, but probably two spring to mind. Um, Hugh Thomas, French teacher, who was a great disciplinarian. I remember he caught me a few times in the bookmakers um, and I don't know whether it was him catching me or me catching him but um, I always had a, a look of sort of trepidation and knowing I was in trouble and he had a slight look of embarrassment funnily enough. Yeah. We've heard a rumour that you uh, used to run a book when you were at school. Well, I didn't actually run a book, I used to be the runner so yeah. what, I, what used to happen was my friends We'd pick out a horse, be it on a Saturday or whenever it was, and um, I would be, if you like, the mug or the foolish one that would go down to the bookmakers and put it on. Um, and I can remember one instance in 1988, and we backed the 2,000 guineas winner, and it was 10 to 1, but I told everybody it was 7 to 1. So <laughs> that was my reward for, t for taking the risk for going down the bookmakers. That was TB Fish Bookmakers, I think? I think so. it was, and I think on one particular occasion we took more than £100 out, which in 1987 was a lot of money. I'll say, yes. Was sport a big part of your time at Clondubbery? Well, I think it's a huge part of everybody's time at Clondubbery. Um, sport was um, so important, playing rugby, playing cricket, even playing football in the evenings. You know, rugby was the be-all and end-all at Clondubbery, if you like, um, and the success of the first 15 and um, how they got on in the Brecon match was, was, um, was, was important to the whole year. Um, I was lucky enough to play cricket at Llandovery. I captained the first 11 um, in my lower six, and I think I played 
first 11 cricket from the age of 13 upwards um, and really enjoyed it. You've mentioned um, visiting the local bookies. Were there any other misdemeanours in your time? I always seemed to be running. Running was part and parcel at Llandovery. Um, whether it was running around Tredega, um, being up too late and talking, it was seen you've got far too much energy, so go and run around Tredega at 6 o'clock in the morning. That would be on a Monday morning and you were still doing it on a Thursday morning, so it obviously didn't pay that, many, that much dividends. Um, and we used, to, we used to be running all the time and it always used to rain when we ran and uh, you know, there was, that was part and parcel. And so you saw Slendubbery uh, through to the sixth form, um, did you see it right through to the end? Unfortunately not. Um, very nearly saw it through to the end. Um, I finished my A-levels and I think it, I finished my last A-level which was Ancient History and we were all delighted and we decided we'd celebrate. It was, I can remember it vividly, it was the night that David Platt scored the winner for England against Belgium in the quarterfinals of the World Cup. And I think we were in the plough, which was behind the old basketball, now behind the, the new sports centre. And I'd had more than enough, not being used to drinking. And the sensible ones went back and didn't get caught. And the foolish ones, me and one other, decided to go to where all the masters drink. And I went in there and the first thing I said to John Kendrick was, do you want a pint? And at that point, he didn't take me up on his offer. He said, I think it's time for you to go home. Um, probably slightly worse for wear. And uh, the next morning, my mother was phoned to come and pick me up. But um, there was no hard feelings. And everybody laughed about it. Even then, everybody laughed about it. And everybody jokes about it now. But uh, no, I did have a slightly premature ending. Did you imagine when you were at Flandubri that you'd end up in horse racing? No, um, horse racing came about basically by chance. Um, I always had planned to have a, a future in agriculture in one way or another. Um, I went to agriculture college after Llandovery. Having an interest in racing, sort of, I always kept in touch with racing, but um, it was by chance I went to work for a trainer called Ian Balding for a summer and ended up staying there four years. And, and I got lucky, I suppose, and um, I got introduced to the right people at the right time. And along with my wife, we've, we've built up a relatively successful business. And you started training on your own in 2004, was it? Yeah, 2004, and we had seven horses, um, mm. and it was a struggle. It was very, very hard, and you know, you had to really dig deep. Um, and then, in halfway through, I think 2008, we got an influx of horses, and we've grown ever since. And now we train 100 horses. Your first winner which was in 2004, must have been a great occasion for more reasons than one, I believe. Yeah, um, it was, I'd been with my now wife um, for 10 years and it was our first ever runner. And I sort of made the plan that we'd run on in the Will You Marry Me stakes on Valentine's Day. Um, and it was my first ever runner and the horse was called Cut and Dried and my plan was to win the race and propose to her afterwards and it's not often a plan comes together but the horse won by three lengths and um, it was a good day. And then you hit really major success with a horse called Dream Ahead. Yeah, he was, he was my first proper horse. Um, he won five group ones. He was rated the same as Frankel 126, which is a very famous racehorse. Um, and he was bought for relatively little money for 30,000. And four and a half million pounds later, he was sold. Um, but he was a wonderful horse. He basically put my name in lights and he got me noticed for the first time. And, and we've grown and luckily we've, we've continued to grow since. You've clearly got rather more than seven horses and rather more than seven members of staff as well. How big is your operation now? We train 130 horses and we employ over 50 people. It is a big business now and it's very labour intensive. A um, lot of organisation. Um, and I'm very lucky that I have a wife that is very involved. She's an accountant and she runs half the business and I run half the business and it works very well. What ambitions within horse racing remain for you then? There's so many ambitions. I mean, you know, there's so many classics to win. I'd love to win the Derby. Um, I'd love to win the English 2000 guineas. An English classic next would be, mm. would be nice. Um, every year we're striving for winners at Royal Ascot. I think it's one of those industries when you think you've got to the top, you're, you're, 
you're on your way down. So it's, it's one of those, there's always races to win. And I believe you also trained for some old Andavarian masters, including the before mentioned Hugh Thomas. Yeah, I trained for Hugh Thomas. I, I, I saw him at Foss Lass race course um, back in the day, in back 2011, and we had a treble. So we had three winners on the night, and I think he backed every one, and he said he, he would um, be interested in having a horse with us. Um, and it, it was great, and the idea was fantastic, and we found a horse, um, and everybody was very excited. Unfortunately, the horse was the slowest horse we've ever trained, um, and he was never any good. But um, no, it was, it, was, it, was, it was lovely training for somebody that taught you and disciplined you and, and you'd had a lot of fun with um, but unfortunately it didn't really work out that he was a superstar. And while you were at Clondubbery what were your happiest memories do you feel? Um, I think always always the camaraderie, my friends, um, I think sport brought those two things together. Um, it was always a very warm place and you never felt lonely, which I think was very, very important, especially as a border. And um, yeah. I'll always be eternally grateful for Flandovery for that. Um, I think all those things have helped in my success in the future. Thank you very much, David. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure and, um, mm. you know, it brings back some fond memories.